Hello and welcome to the Wisdom Audio online learning series. Today we're going to teach you how to set up a 9.4.4 system with your Wisdom SC3 system controller. I want to remind everybody you can always check out the wisdomaudio.com website where you can find lots of great information. For example, the SC3 under electronics and just scroll over to SC3. Uh, you can see right here there's some great images, features, uh, resources at the bottom, some quick tabs on the top, system controller info sheet. We've got RS-232, the SC3 owner's manual, and then, of course, uh, current draw and BTU information. With that, we're going to hop right into our setup on the SC3, which we are already logged into. Uh, the SC3 has 16 XLR inputs on the back as well as 32 XLR outputs. Our system today is going to be a single zone system. I want to remind you that you have to create your zone even if it's only one zone. So we're just going to create one zone. I'm going to rename it the theater. Always save your change and then you will always be going from left to right as you're setting up your system controller whether it's a SC2 or the SC3. Next, we're going to just click on our Inputs tab right here and switch on over. Since we're using a 9.4.4 uh, system, we're not using a full 17 inputs. Uh, we're only going to use a single subwoofer input, and we're going to let the SC3 do all of the uh, delay and outputs for our four separate subwoofers that we're going to have. So we have to create 14 inputs. That's our nine main speakers, our four overhead channels, and our single subwoofer channel. So I'm just going to type 14 and create our inputs. So the input numbers over here correlate to the XLR input on the back of the SC. Over here is our input names. Now we have drop downs, so it makes it very simple to just simply go right down the list enter in uh, which speakers you're going to be naming each one of these. The other thing that's nice is you can customize this. So uh, we're going to do our side channels as left, front, side. Now I can probably use my Atmos channels in here. So I've got my left top front, uh, right top front, left top rear, right top rear, and then of course our subwoofer input. So when I save those, then I'm going to be able to jump to channels. And again, I can do that right here or up on top. Either way, we'll get you to the next one. Now what's nice about having our channel page here is that I can just simply click on import from inputs. So this is where I take all of my input channels and make sure that each one is labeled properly, that they're all in the right zone. Also I have to make sure that I tell the system that I have a subwoofer in the system. And here is where I have to get a little creative because we have 16 total Dirac channels with a SC3. However, I have 17 total speakers in the system. So I have to determine at this point which speakers I want to array together to create a single Dirac channel. And in another video that we'll show you on the YouTube channel is how to create and figure out which f of your subwoofers you should array together. It is possible to array your side channels. It's a possible to array your overhead channels. Uh, you can also still do individual delay and levels for each of those channels even though they are Dirac together. However, we find that uh, subwoofers are best to array together simply because you usually have two subwoofers that will act very similarly. And again, in another training video that we have, we show you with the equipment that you have simply using your Dirac calibration setup and your Dirac microphone, 
uh, how you can determine which subwoofers you should array together. So now what I have to do is since I've got my 14, I actually have to create uh, a two more channels. And you can see that as soon as I created those extra two channels, my add channels went away. Because again, we have only got 16 direct channels. So I've already determined that in my subwoofer outputs, uh, I have two subwoofers in the front and I have two subwoofers in the rear. Subwoofer left, subwoofer right. And my subwoofer front will actually be both my uh, left and right front subwoofers, which will I will, uh, will array those two subwoofers together. So again, I have to tell each one of these that they are a subwoofer. Uh, here we're going to take our signal all from our subwoofer input. Now I've got all 16 of my uh, Dirac channels created. Now we're going to save those changes and we're going to go ahead to speakers. Again, I can do that from here or up top. Either way gets me to my next one. So now as I mentioned before, we set up our 16 channels, but we have 17 speakers. So I'm going to add in all 17 of those speakers. Now that I have my 17 speakers created, I'm going to go through and I'm going to name all of my speakers and then I'm going to select my speaker types. What I like to do on this is I like to select my input channels first and then name my speakers the same as my input channel. It just makes things a little bit easier to do it that way. Uh, so you're not trying to guess you know, what you actually call the speaker. So we'll go through, we'll assign each one of these. So now here, when I get to my subwoofers, I do have to change things up a little bit because I'm going to have two subwoofers that will take the input from their subwoofer front channel. Even though we've got four subwoofers, we're only using three inputs so that we can... Uh, we're using a single input. We're renaming the four subs with the three separate areas of the room. So now I can go through and uh, rename all of these. Now that I've got all my speakers named, I'm going to select my actual speakers that we'll be using in the system. Uh, this particular system is going to use the L8i for our left, right, and center, which will be behind the screen. Our surrounds are all P4i's. So just simply select all of these. And our overhead channels are the ICS-7As. We'll select all four of those. And then our subwoofers are the S-90s. Now the last thing that we have to do is we have to s assign our output ports. So those are the XLR outputs on the back of the SC unit that run to your amplifiers. So in this case, I've just got them straight in order here. So we'll just run right down the list. And of course, you can do that any way that you like. When you use the Wisdom Audio uh, custom cable kits, they are all actually labeled. So for the SC3 wire kit, which is called the WWK-BB3, we've got 16 input cables that are 1 meter, and then we've got 32 output cables, which are 1.5 meter and they are all labeled. So it just really makes it much simpler when you're, you know, if you try to correlate those inputs and outputs to the numbers that are on the cables. It's just one less label that you have to make when you're building your rack. So once I get these all set, I'm going 
into our subwoofers. There's our number 16, and then finally our 17th speaker output. Now I can save my changes. So what I have done now is we've got our 16 Dirac channel set up, which is arraying the subwoofer front left and front right to a subwoofer front input channel that we have. And our two rear subwoofers will still be done independently. But because the two subwoofers in the front were very, very similar in their impulse response, also in their frequency response, it made sense to use those as a single Dirac channel. At this point, I can jump over to my speaker testing tab. You can see everything is here. All 17 of my speakers are in here. So now I can run some pink noise through each of my channels. I'll just start with the left and click on my pink noise. You can see that everything else here uh, mutes automatically if I enable all. I can also do pink noise on all of my channels, uh, but primarily I'm going to just go one at a time. So if I just click on this channel, or I can click on here if I want to do multiple channels together, I can click on these and I can mute only individual channels I want to mute. Otherwise, I click down here and that will solo the channel. So I'll go pink noise. Uh, run through each of my channels, confirm that each one is correct and where they are supposed to have sound coming from. Uh, and once I get through all of these channels, uh, I'll click back on normal operation. Always remember prior to leaving this page, you always have to enable all. Now, we finally got ready to actually do our Dirac calibration. One thing that I want to show you as part of this video, however, is that since we arrayed the two front subwoofers together, uh, even though Dirac will treat these as a single channel and give you a single delay, what's nice about the system controller is I can go back in, I can click on my advanced control tab for both of those two front subwoofers, and I can go in, I can make individual changes to each of those subs. So I can change the gain. I can also change the delay, which really helps to fine tune uh, the sub impulse response so that you're receiving all of that information from your subwoofers at precisely the correct timing for the main uh, reference listening position. Now the one thing you're going to want to do when you finish up any calibration or setup, uh, and you can even do this along the way just in case something was to ever happen or if your computer crashed or anything like that, uh, this would allow you to uh, export your JSON file. And so what you'll do is you'll just come over to System, use the drop down, go to over to Export. And if I right-click on this link, it's going to give me an option to save the link as. So here I can go in, and I've got a calibrations folder. I'm going to make a new folder. We'll just call it training folder. You can name it whatever you like. All my calibrations I normally do are in a folder that has the name of the client. And then you can call it whatever you like. So in this case, I'm going to rename it the 944 training setup. Now if I save that, it's now going to be saved. So I can close this. Now, for example, let me just show you. If I was to reset this entire thing back to zero, it's going to confirm. Now you can see everything is gone. What's great about this though is I can just simply go up here to system, I can say import, and I'll find my calibrations folder. I've got my training folder and there's my 944 system setup and just like that it will reload everything back in so that I'm all set to go.